Hey, this is Russell Moore, and this is Reading in Exile, where I kind of walk around my library and take out uh, books that we can talk about uh, together. Uh, last night, I found myself watching, uh, because uh, really uh, ending uh, the series, because several people have been recommending you really need to watch Tiger King on Netflix. I don't know how many of you have seen this. It is uh, not, uh, I, I would caution you, the language is horrible and the reality is really, really dark. So if you're not able to navigate through that, don't, don't watch it. But I was watching this documentary, which is about these competing uh, large cat uh, exotic zoo owners going at each other and, and uh, threatening to kill each other and, and having all of these plots against each other with a really dark view of human nature. And then uh, after I turned it off, turning to the news and seeing the calamity uh, that is all around us, what we're all worried and, and burdened down with, and then, as I'm flipping through, I came across one of these prosperity gospel preachers on TV. Those of you who know me know there is nothing that makes me angrier uh, than prosperity gospel grifters. And uh, some of them are the very same ones that really threw me into a spiritual crisis as a teenager. You know, Jim Baker, uh, who was out... Uh, scandalizing the entire world with the name of Jesus in the 1980s when I was a kid is now selling these products that if you just send him money, you can get rid of coronavirus and uh, someone else uh, standing up and saying, if you just send your seed gift, uh, God will prosper you. Uh, if you hear anybody talking that way, uh, that's likely a heretic and a lunatic together. So prosperity gospel didn't mean to go off on a rant on that, but all of those things together within just a, a few minutes uh, left me with this really dark sort of view of the world and of humanity. That's not new. That's not new at all, which is why I want to talk uh, today about a book um, that uh, is very, very old, uh, but is dealing with all of those issues of calamity, of uh, where is God in the midst of suffering, um, of, uh, of, of why do we live in a place with so many uh, sort of grifters and frauds within the church and outside the church, um, and, and really what's going on here. It's called The City of God. I have several different uh, editions uh, and translations that are here. City of God is brilliant and then a little quirky uh, in some places too, uh, as you will uh, notice if you read through it. But here's essentially what it's about. City of God is a takedown of a sort of um, incipient prosperity gospel. So Augustine is writing after something that no one could have ever foreseen, which is the collapse of the Roman Empire. Uh, think of the language of Rome as the eternal city, and this this empire seemed to be so solid, and then it, it falls apart uh, to invaders, and the question is why? So there were many people in the pagan world who were saying, well, look at uh, when this happened. It ha happened after the emergence and the growth of Christianity. Therefore, uh, what, what must have happened is our abandoning our old gods led to this sort of calamity. So I mean, that's that sort of transactional view that we see in the prosperity gospel, which is a, a form of very, very old Canaanite paganism, uh, just uses different names. But it's to say, if you do something, um, name and claim something, or send some money to somebody, or uh, have sacrifices to these particular gods, then you will be blessed with security and with peace and with uh, prosperity and with flourishing and with all of those things. So Augustine's writing against that, and he's writing to people within the church who also were disturbed by what's going on and also starting to wonder, well, well where does this leave us? What's, what's actually happening here? So he writes The City of God in order to say uh, what we see in the course of human history is not one reality, but two. So he uses these metaphors of cities. 
So you have the city of God, that ultimate city of Revelation 21 and 22, New Jerusalem, comes down out of heaven, which is already present, uh, in the, uh, but, but hidden, as Jesus talked about in his parables, uh, in, in life as we know it right now. It's motivated by love of God, by the Spirit, and it often is hidden. Um, and then there's this earthly city, what some people have called the city of man, uh, when they're talking about Augustine. This earthly city that's motivated by a kind of social Darwinism, by coercion, by power, by survival of the fittest, by envy, by competition. Uh, and what does that lead you to? Well, it leads you to Tiger King. And it leads you to strife. It leads you to self-destruction as well as destruction of others. It leads to the sort of animalism. That is exactly what the Apostle Paul is talking about in Galatians 5. Where he talks about the works of the flesh motivated by this sort of self-protectiveness uh, and self-exaltation. Uh, and it leads to hopelessness and anger and, and almost the, the imagery of a trapped animal. Uh, so Paul says, don't bite at one another lest you devour one another. That's, that's exactly what's, uh, what's uh, the, the earthly city uh, leads to, left to itself, and the affections that are behind it. So Augustine goes through and, and takes you through biblical history, takes you through world history, and shows you how these two separate realities have always been there and how the city of God is the one that ultimately triumphs. Now, that's a, that's a word we all need uh, right now. When you're, uh, you're sitting around and, and looking at what's happening in the world, um, I mean, who, who would have thought about this? I mean, there, there are several people who have talked about on social media how they, uh, how they regret saying on December the 31st of this past year, oh, I'm glad 2019 is gone. It was, it was awful, not knowing what was headed in 2020. Well, as Christians, we have the sort of security of knowing Jesus is uh, on the throne and that God is at work putting all of his enemies under his feet and that we have a citizenship that is secure, but it's hidden because it's hidden in Christ and Christ is right now in the heavenly places. City of God is a really good meditation on that. Now, again, some people are going to say this is intimidating because this book is huge, and it is, but there are small abridged versions of it uh, that you can get that are good translations and are abridged, and there's a lot of it that you really don't need uh, to read unless you're uh, an Augustine scholar or, or unless you just want to read the whole thing. You can get the gist of it in smaller sections, and you don't even have to read all of that. You can go through the table of contents and sort of see the relevant places to trace uh, his argument out. If you uh, are saying, I'd, I'd like to uh, do this, but I'm, I don't really know a lot about Augustine of Hippo, North African uh, Christian leader, I would recommend this biography, which is my favorite, by Peter Brown, uh, Augustine of Hippo. It's... Um, Oh, I don't know, 20, 25 years old uh, now, but it still is my favorite of the biographies. And there are a lot of really good biographies uh, on Augustine. So that's the city of God. I apologize for my prosperity gospel rant, but I'm always up for a good rant against the prosperity gospel. Let me know in the comments what you would like for us to talk about, what books or what authors or what kinds of books, and we'll deal with them here at Reading in Exile.